In this video, we'll build the SIG Buster Kit, one of the two planes eligible for the LA-15 scale race. This kit is simple enough, but there are some necessary modifications to make. I have to bend a new 1 8 inch landing gear wire, widen the engine mount, build a tank caddy, and make a fuel shutoff device. The original gear is the split type made from 3 32nd inch wire which I don't like due to the increased risk of failure during a hard landing. My plan is to move the pivot point to behind the lower engine block and to provide three different positions for the landing gear straps. This will allow me to change the position of the main gear depending on field conditions, forward for grass, back for pavement. I designed one continuous gear made from 1 8 inch wire. I really hate bending wire this thick. I can never get the radius of the bend as tight as a factory made gear. The quarter inch maple blocks that come with the kit are a little narrow for 440 screws, so I plan to replace them with 3 8 inch blocks. Unfortunately, the blocks I have are too wide for the fuselage. My solution is to rip the maple down to 3 8 inch square. This is a slow process using a scroll saw. Along with my Dremel, I really wouldn't want to do without a scroll saw for model airplane building. The engine fits nicely in the new mount. I tested a blind nut in the 1 8 inch light ply doublers provided in the kit and found the plywood too soft. As a replacement, I used 1 16 inch regular plywood laminated to 1 16 inch balsa. This increases the strength of the doublers without changing their dimensions. Here's how it fits together. Did you notice the mistake I made here? I'll explain in a moment. I have a lot of small spring clamps I bought from Rona. Very handy. My mistake was that I laminated balsa to the plywood doubler in the area of the engine blocks. This area should have been solid plywood to withstand the pressure of the engine mounting screws. I had to dremel out the balsa and insert more plywood. This worked out pretty well. You can see here the three position adjustment of the landing gear. I need to trace out the wingtips. Here's a great tip for doing this. I bought some carbon paper from Staples. By placing this under the plans, I can trace the shape directly onto another sheet of paper. If there is a straight line to trace, I just mark the start and end points so I can use a ruler later. Then I trace all the curves carefully. After cutting the shape out of the paper, I then transfer the shape onto the balsa wood. The original plans remain uncut. If the part were made of plywood, I would have traced directly onto it through the carbon paper. With the engine in its rearmost position, there is not a lot of room for the fuel tank and shutoff device. With the tank over the wing, the fuel would flood into the engine making it difficult to start. It's just as hard starting with the fuel draining back into the tank under the wing. The tank has to be mounted in line with the engine. I want the tank angled outboard at the back and outboard at the bottom in order to force the fuel into the back corner where I have installed a fuel nipple from Sullivan. The nipple's threads are on the outside making installation easy. There's not a lot of room, but I can squeeze the fuel shutoff in there. The tank caddy is carved with the appropriate angles and the groove on the back is for a zip tie. This is my fuel shutoff. The 3 32nd inch wire acts as a spring when screwed to the fuselage. Full down elevator will pull the wire off its rest and pinch the fuel line. For fuel venting, I want the vent from the top corner of the tank to vent straight downwards. I want another vent going straight into the fuel tank to fill from the top. The most I can bend a brass tube with heat is about 90 degrees. After that, it kinks. The Dubro pipe bender can do a better job, but only on the right kind of brass. The regular tubing will kink in the bender, and the so-called soft brass is too soft for practical use. The only brass I like to use in the bender comes with the Sullivan and Dubro tanks. Here are my vent pipes. Notice that one of them bends both inside and outside the tanks. 
You can only have one of these as it would be impossible to get the second one past the stopper. A clear syringe is required for refueling and the numbers on the Brodax syringe are not fuel proof. Cover the numbers carefully with clear plastic shipping tape before using the syringe the first time. This oversized tube and undersized clamp will convert the syringe into a fast fill device. Draw up some fuel as usual and just shove the syringe onto the tank vent, no fiddling with hoses. I used another Sullivan tank nipple to improve the syringe modification. I cut off the syringe opening and installed the nipple. The oversized hose is now held securely on the syringe. Another important improvement was to add a bracket to the fuel system that holds the tank vent more securely when filling. I added one 32nd inch plywood fuselage doublers for extra strength. I put 3 quarters of an ounce of tip weight in the outboard wing. The leading edge, tip weight and lead out guide were all fiberglass for extra strength and durability. For each model plane I build, I use about a roll of masking tape, not so much to mask the areas I don't want to paint as to mask the areas I don't want to sand. It's a great technique. I find sanding really boring, so I usually put on a DVD to watch. It's absolutely fabulous. I wear an appropriate mask for protection, of course. To help with the sanding process, I hooked up an electric piano foot pedal to my central vacuum system. Pressing the foot pedal turns on the vacuum and I can clear the dust away without fiddling with an awkward switch on the handle. I glued the wing in place with CA because it sets quickly and I don't have to do a lot of holding, but the real strength comes from the epoxy fillet. I use 60 minute epoxy mixed with baby powder to the consistency of toothpaste. Don't let the label fool you. You have to complete the job in about 15 to 20 minutes. With the wing and fuselage masked off, I press the epoxy into the joint working fast, fast, fast. I wipe once with finger dipped in rubbing alcohol to remove the excess. Then the masking tape is removed. This leaves a rough fillet. Again with the rubbing alcohol, I mold the remaining epoxy into the final fillet. It's next to impossible to sand or reshape later, so the job I do now is final. It looks pretty good, and thanks to Keith for showing me the technique. An initial balance test showed the plane grossly nose heavy. I didn't want to add an ounce and a half of non-functioning lead to the rear, so I decided to improve the strength of the tail components. I replaced the balsa elevator with laminated plywood. Balsa is kept for the area where the CA hinges go. By assembling the elevator in one piece, I knew the halves would line up perfectly later on. It looks great, so I fiberglassed the joining wire in place. I tried the same technique with the stabilizer, but it was too heavy. Even with a 100% balsa core, it was still too heavy, so I ended up using the original all balsa stabilizer. I was, however, able to use the light ply for the fin and rudder, which I made in a single piece. I used fiberglass to secure the tail skid into place. The pull test is 20 pounds, so I decided to upgrade the bell crank. The replacement uses a number 6 screw and the bell crank is arranged to keep the leadouts and pushrod from catching on each other. I installed a pushrod guide to reduce vibration and the pushrod is bent to accommodate the peculiar requirements of the model. I like keeping things adjustable with a threaded clevis. I finished with several coats of thinned dope, some light silk span, more dope, sanding filler, spray primer and spray paint. Some club members pointed out that the model stands too tall on its gear in this position, but if I reduce the height, then it would be too short with the gear in the forward position. If I can find some suitable aluminum strut type gear, I'll replace my wire gear. The fuel shutoff cable is routed through two eyelets to take it from the top of the elevator under the wing to the shutoff device. The plans show the center of gravity near the forward leadout. With the engine mounted in its rear position, the plane turned out just slightly tail heavy. With the engine mounted in its forward position, the center of gravity is nominal with no room for adjustment. 
It turns out that the adjustable rear attachment of the fuel shutoff cable was too heavy at 3 grams and threw off my original estimates. I made a new cable, this time with a simplified adjustment at the front. An eyelet was eliminated by passing the cable around the threaded rod insert and the clevis was soldered shut to receive a line clip. The rear of the cable was made the conventional way with an eyelet and the line clip connects directly to the elevator horn. This arrangement was very light on the tail. This improved the balance to slightly nose heavy. Line tension can now be adjusted with tail weight to suit the wind conditions on the day of the race. An even better outcome is seen with the landing gear in its forward position. The Buster is ready for flight.